Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a quick, short video on the Lehigh Valley Phantoms weekend recap, where I'll be releasing the weekly preview tomorrow before all of their lists of games this week. But the Phantoms, of course, fell flat and got smacked in the face pretty much on Saturday, seven to three loss to the Charlotte Checkers. That it looked like they had absolutely no chance, pretty much from the onset as they got absolutely demolished in this game Jerry Decor uh, Joey Decord excuse me did his job for the checkers uh letting in three goals and having a good overall game himself but the phantoms really didn't have much push in this game this is one of those games uh, when you look at the box score and we beat them in shots and we um did that, it looks a little bit better on the box score than it does in obviously the 7-3 to loss that you look at it and go, how did they lose 7-3s? to Because they didn't show up, they didn't play well, um, it didn't seem like they played the overall game into their system that they then showed up and played the very next day. So that's when, when you see inconsistencies like that, you don't go from having one of the better, more consistent AHL teams last season to all of the sudden being more inconsistent. Yes, you have some new faces like Hayden Hodgins, who took the bad penalty on Saturday and bounced back and had a good game on Sunday. But you still have the same leadership group and you still have the same core. And you added in other brilliant people like Adam Glendening to the leadership group with Cal O'Reilly. So I think this is a team that just isn't being coached that well. And I hate to say because I love Lappy and love them as a player, but playing and coaching aren't the same thing. And in terms of being a development guy that helps the players along on that side of things, that's not the same thing as coaching, which is kind of what his role was to kind of help the young guys a bit when he was up with the Flyers. That's also not the same thing. So he seems like he's in over his head a little bit right now, to say the least, just to be nice. And he has to try to figure that out because to go from losing 7-3 to three and getting killed in the first period, you got Luke Hyman, Zach Dolpy, and Hayden, or Logan Husko, excuse me, scored all within the 10, before the 10 minute mark of the period. Then, of course, Ratcliffe came back and scored at 15 13, so you're thinking maybe you have some stuff going here. But then our former player, CT Carson Trawinski, is able to pot one against us and scores before Jackson Cates makes it a little bit closer at the end of the first. And then that's really that first period is the only time maybe you felt there was a little bit of a push there since the Phantoms were able to get two goals. Then it was true. Hepaniemi, who's going to be a pretty damn good, uh, I think he honestly has a chance to be a solid NHL player sometime, but we'll, we'll see. And then Zach Delpy, um, who were able to score then, where we were able to get one from Wilman. So Phantoms got three goals, but I mean, they were able to get those three goals. Those three goals are probably some of their only good plays of the entire night. That was a very piss-poor showing and just a very bad overall game on the 7-3 loss um, to the Charlotte Checkers. But then, obviously, on the good front, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, this is like what I say about stats being deceiving. They got outshot 38-27 to to the next day, and then it was 5-3. to So... You obviously want to fix that. You don't want to allow that team to pressure you as much as they were still able to do on Sunday and then have to rely on a goaltender that had to be subbed out so Kuro could get a cup of coffee and made four saves on Saturday when he came in, which I thought should have happened sooner, especially now knowing that we put Sandstrom in back-to-back -back games as short as hell should have happened sooner on Sunday. That's bad coaching there, too, to not take him out of the game sooner. But um, we put Sandstrom back in on Sunday like I said, which is why I think Ustamenko should have came in quicker on Saturday, and he did very well. He stood up to the job, but I don't want to keep playing overplaying Felix Sandstrom because that's going to lead him to, yes, he's playing well, but that might lead him to he's gone through some injuries in his early career, and I want to make sure he stays healthy. That's why at the beginning of the season I talked about how important it was to have Kroos, Ustamenko, Ursan, Sandstrom. You have the depth in net. You also have a veteran in Nagel who's been in the AHL, NHL, that's with the Reading Royals, that's playing well. So you have the depth in net. You're not really using it right now. You're just um, playing a guy back-to-back. -back. You overplayed him on Saturday. He should have been subbed out sooner. He did answer on Sunday, and I love Felix Sanson for that. He steps up to the occasion. Ever since he went on that win streak last year, he has the good tools to be a solid goaltender, and he's showing that right now. It's just from the perspective of health, I don't think you want to overpush a guy this early in the season, and we're already kind of doing that. 
when it comes to Sandstrom, where the Reading Royals are doing it out of necessity when it comes to veteran Pat Nagel, just because Kirill's not down there right now. He's, of course, up with the Phantoms, but you could have put him in that game sooner on Saturday to not let Sandstrom, especially knowing you got to put him in a Sunday, but that's a side point. Nonetheless, the Phantoms play a good game on Sunday. They're able to win 5-3. to three. And also a key player that actually has played well other than Saturday that's been a good enforcer, a good added also scorer all of a sudden, not being up in the AHL for multiple years. Hayden Hodgson bounced back from a bad game Saturday and taking a boneheaded penalty and was able to score a goal. This is by Hobberg and Glenn Denning. And then we were able to have Cab York get one assisted by Day and Woman, Zamoa from Glendening and O'Reilly. Zamoa, excuse me, was finally able to get his first. He's been playing well. He's been pushing, and now he's finally able to get his first goal. And then we had Willman, of course, score in this game as well, assisted by Frost and Glendening, and then Garrett Wilson from Frost and Mayhew. So I would say the players of that game are Felix Sandstrom because he stepped up to the plate. He's a very good goaltender, and he's showing that again. It's just about balancing his play and not pushing it in back-to-back -back weekend games like I felt they did that weekend, but it is what it is. It's over now. It's in the past. So move on. He played great in the second round of the game, and the team played terrible as a whole, so I'm not putting that on him on the Saturday game whatsoever. But I would say the players of the game for Sunday would have to be Max Willman along with um, Igor Zamula because he got his first points, and then we're going to give it to Frost since he had two assists. And then the goaltender, Felix Sandstrom, you know me, whenever the goalies do well, they're automatically a player of the game for me. So that has been a reaction to the Phantom weekend. It was very bad, and then a good game for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Now it's about trying to find some consistency coming into this week. This has been the latest edition of the Ghostly Take, a Lehigh Valley Phantoms podcast. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Jeff Borick. If you enjoy the content, subscribe on the easy-to-use widget up above or down below on the subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Peace out, everybody.